Well, good Friday devotional to all of you. John Miller here, and I realize that probably half of you don't watch this on Friday, but good Friday anyway. Uh, We've been going basically verse by verse through the book of Ephesians. But today, I want to tell you a story uh, because I, I think it helps us appreciate Paul's writing to the people in Ephesus, the Christians in Ephesus, um, by looking uh, back at the history when Paul visited Ephesus and what happened to him there, because it affects the kinds of things that later he writes to them about. And so, and it's a fascinating story. It's in the book of Acts, where Luke uh, tells this story of Uh, Paul visiting Ephesus and so I just want you to sit back and enjoy the story I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation Um, and so here we go beginning with verse 21 afterward Paul felt impelled by the Holy Spirit to go over to Macedonia and Achaia before returning to Jerusalem and after that he said I must go on to Rome He sent his two assistants, uh, Timothy and Erastus, on ahead to Macedonia while he stayed a while longer in the province of Asia, modern Turkey. But about that time, serious trouble developed in Ephesus concerning the way. So the church, the the newly minted church of Jesus Christ uh, was called the way in a number of places throughout the Roman Empire. And he says in verse 24, it began with Demetrius, a silversmith, who had a large business manufacturing silver shrines of the Greek goddess Artemis. And if you remember, and some of you may have been to Ephesus, I have been there, but one of the seven ancient wonders of the world, man-made wonders of the world, uh, was this temple of Artemis. Um, And it was uh, an incredible structure. Uh, so large in dimension and incredible to to build something of that size and scope uh, one of the seven wonders and so um, this temple which is also called diana uh, was there and uh, yeah, demetrius had a large business manufacturing these silver sh- uh, shrines he kept uh, many craftsmen busy He called the craftsmen together, along with others employed uh, in related trades, and addressed them as follows. Gentlemen, you know that our wealth comes from this business. As you have seen and heard, this man, Paul, has persuaded many people that handmade gods aren't gods at all. And this is happening not only here in Ephesus, but throughout the entire province. Of course, I am not just talking about the loss of public respect for our business. I'm also concerned that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will lose its influence and that Artemis, this magnificent goddess worshiped throughout the province of Asia and all around the world, will be robbed of her prestige. Actually, this guy was being robbed of his money and that was his impetus for uh, agitating the people. In verse 28, we read, At this, their anger boiled, and they began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! A crowd began to gather, and soon the city was filled with confusion. Everyone rushed to the amphitheater, dragging along Gaius and uh, Aristarchus, who were Paul's traveling companions uh, from Macedonia. Paul wanted to go in, but the believers wouldn't let him. Some of the officials of the province friends of Paul, also sent a message to him, begging him not to risk his life by entering the amphitheater. And I've been there and stood in that amphitheater, and uh, it is quite something uh, to behold. Uh, It's there today. Um, The archaeologists have found it and dug it out, and it's uh, really something. Verse 32, inside the people were all shouting, some one thing, some another. Everything was in confusion. In fact, most of them didn't even know why they were there. Isn't it interesting? When I think of the, uh, the Gaza protests and all that was going on there, uh, and it's still going on, of course, in, in Israel and the surrounding region, <clears throat> people are interviewed on, on uh, 
uh, college campuses in America. Large crowds gathered to protest and they're interviewed. And why are you here? And a lot of them don't even know why they are there. They're just kind of caught up in the emotions of the time. And this was what was happening here. Alexander was thrust forward by some of the Jews who encouraged him to explain the situation. He motioned for silence and tried to speak in defense. But when the crowd realized he was a Jew, they started shouting again and kept it up for two hours. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. There was, um, wow, just think of it, because they know he's a Jew. You know the, the trouble the Jews had in that day? A minority uh, in the city of Ephesus uh, and how they must have been treated. In verse 35, it says, at last the mayor was able to quiet them down enough to speak. This is the mayor of the city. Citizens of Ephesus, he said. Everyone knows that Ephesus is the official guardian of the temple of the great Artemis, whose image fell down to us from heaven. Since this is an indisputable fact, you shouldn't be disturbed. No matter what is said, don't do anything rash. You have brought these men here, but they have stolen nothing from the temple and have not spoken against the goddess, which is interesting. They didn't call it a cult. They didn't call it evil. They didn't call it anything. They were just proclaiming Jesus. And then he goes on. If Demetrius and the craftsmen have a case against them, the courts are in session and the judges can take the case at once. Let them go through the legal channels. And if there are complaints about other matters, they can be settled in a legal assembly. I am afraid we are in danger of being charged with rioting by the Roman government, since there is no cause for all this commotion. And if Rome demands an explanation, we won't know what to say. And then he dismissed them and they dispersed. Quite a story, isn't it? I think it helps us appreciate as we read through Ephesians all the more. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Love you all. Bye-bye.